there is a rule of nature across the old world. Imperceptible at times, but no less invariable than the passing of the seasons or the movement of the heavens. Travel north, and the barriers that separate the mortal realms from the raw power of chaos begin to weaken. What men call the winds of magic flow from the polar gates out of wounds in reality, bringing with them mutation, wonder, and terror. The chaos wastes are said to be home to immortal gods and infinitely worse things, numberless, nameless monstrosities that toil and linger amongst eternal plains. In truth, the wastes are this and infinitely more, but faced with the limitations of mortal understanding, these legends alone must do. What separates these realms of ruinous powers from the civilizations of the old world are the borderlands. Territories where neither the mortal realms or those of chaos hold complete dominion. In the old world, such lands stretch from the boundaries of the kingdom of Kislev to the Goromandi Mountains, a final marchland between order and chaos, known as Troll Country. At first glance, Troll Country appears a vast step, slowly turning to tundra as one travels north. Only a scattered few highlands mark its surface, a dreary, monotonous landscape of paltry hills and fetid frost grass. It is some of the least forgiving country in the world, but its true nature is rarely obvious. Hidden beneath the veil of reality, the land is the site of an endless struggle between dimensions, each attempting to assert itself upon the other. This exhibits itself in subtle and sometimes unpredictable ways. No crops can grow in troll country, and while the odd forest can be found within its borders, their trees are often sickly or deformed. The climate is too tainted, frigid through the spring and autumn, with even the warmest days of summer shrouded by grey overcast skies devoid of warmth. In winters, the entire region is transformed by sheets of ice and snow, Movement is made impossible, and any unfortunate souls must stay in place and wait for the weather to break. The population of Troll Country is overwhelmingly nomadic, and consists mainly of Ungol tribes driven out of the more hospitable lands to the south. Kislevites can be found on occasion too, outcasts and exiles on the periphery of their native lands, or pioneers and adventurers looking for lost wonders. Only the Norsemen are said to inhabit the region year-round, however, pillaging and raiding before even they are forced to make camp for the long winter. The territory takes its name from the infamous number of trolls that roam across the steppe and tundra. Stone and river trolls are most common, but the further north one goes, the more they are twisted and deformed. Other creatures, too, are said to make their home here, Man-sized rats are said to prowl the lands in darkness, seizing unwary travelers to use as slaves or subjects in grotesque experiments. An entire pit of these ratmen is rumored to exist somewhere in Troll Country, a stronghold of misery and cruelty that even the hordes of the ruinous powers would be swept away in a tide of madness. While such tales are doubtless the ravings of madmen and heretics, Troll Country has seen the march of armies. It is the first target to be pillaged by the North, and the last to be reclaimed by the South. The battles between these powers is reflected in the land itself, and every year Troll Country grows just a little stranger, a little less hospitable, and a little larger. In the Atlas, the Templin Institute investigates the most storied places from across alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards.